My Hero Academia, Season 7, Episode 6. I am here again, entering in a totally chill way. <laughs> totally chill. Could not be more chill. This is the backstory and how they planned that very, very sudden war that has now begun. It's time we discuss the future of our world. The final battle plan. Oh yeah, it's all happening so fast. Which is kind of funny. I'm thinking back to something I said about Oyama. I'm like, start realistically. Go get Gatorade for the kids. That was not on the table. We're just starting with war. You're starting out, you are ace in the hole. You're gonna stop crying and get out there and lure all for one into plain sight with all of the villains so that we can attack them, presumably. I'm sort of surprised that they led things to this all out confrontation. They were talking about how their plan was divide and conquer. Maybe that's still on the table. I don't know what the plan is, but I know that Mineta will be key somehow. Oh, another realistic hope. It would be so cool given the momentum she has for Invisible Girl to do something. <laughs> oh, they're gonna torture that's us with this, aren't they? Every pro hero we can spare is scouring the country in an attempt to find all for one. But to be honest, we're not expecting them to succeed. Bring them home. Bring them home, boys. Mr. Aizawa's gambit. If you want I like to the ring to that. Someone who's both cunning and cowardly, you must massage reality and make them believe they're in control. So we pretend. Well, all for an easy victim for that. He's so arrogant. Is too smart for us. Stroke is ego. Do you have to put it like that? At least he didn't say stroke is nutsack. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? That was a sentence. That was a whirlwind of a sentence. What does this mean? There's no time for beach training. I was a fool to dream. If he's watched us since Midoriya came back, he'll believe we're frantic and exhausted. The goal is to have him think we're making a series of bad moves one after the other. Right. Pretending. <laughs> Pretending we're exhausted. So Aoyama's helping us. That's his take. That's Deku's takeaway. <laughs> That's all the takeaways. Thank God, Ayama's not damned to spiritual hell. Will we go about deceiving him? If we lied yeah, this is an unanswered demons. question. Not that it really matters that much. If it's true that All for One is able to tell when someone's lying. Quirk. That's why we'll go with Aizawa's idea and use his power. <sighs> Come on in! Shinzo? Yeah. I'm kind of confused about how Shinzo's quirk is supposed to be utilized for this. Plan. Uh, okay, I'm glad that she said it. She made me feel less bad. You said your power came with limitations. A lot's changed since then. Oh, he's been training with Aizawa, right? I'll use brainwashing to make Aoyama and his parents talk. They'll say what I want them to, but my intentions will stay hidden from the enemy. That's incredible. What? I mean, you gotta test this, right? Like, because Shinzo knows the truth. It's counting on the lie detection to not transfer to Shinzo. Using my quirk this way is difficult. You've got this! <laughs> it's so cool he gets to join the class, de facto. Shinzo was able to amp up his power thanks to intense extracurricular instruction from Aizawa. Amazing! Mr. Aizawa really is the coolest! He is the coolest. Shinzo does not have his provisional license yet, but since this is an emergency... Oh, that answers my question from last episode. I was curious. I didn't think it would be relevant. The heroes won't be there. For this to work, we'll need the help of another individual. Speaking of Aizawa... Are you up to it, Phantom Thief? Hmm. You want me to copy this guy's quirk and master it in a few days to save the world? Oh, that's what... Oh, wow, what man, so many people making a comeback. Sense. God, this show. The returns, the loops, all that class beef seems so, so not important. I'm sorry. I had hoped my voice would get through to him. That's initially what I suspected, or was hoping for, maybe. But it might not be too late. It might still come. And we were all going to become heroes together! You're over, Oshirakubo! I mean, it makes some sense, right? Aizawa is one of the biggest proponents of not letting Oyama fall through the cracks. Well, he has very, very direct, painful, emotional connection to that very thing. I've lost an eye, and my erasure is barely functioning. In a coming battle, I'll be all but useless. We half useful. Not true for so many reasons. Someone tell him. Somebody tell him. Our side would have been massacred at Jaku if it wasn't for your bravery. That's one reason. They said I'd be a side character. Well. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. There are no side characters in my hair academia. This is the story of how we all became heroes. The All Might model is dead. This is the story of how I became the number one hero was a misdirect the whole time. I think it's a mistake to confuse glamour for significance. I mean, the show very clearly stated this with the support group. If you're in game seven to the finals and you give the perfect pass to somebody who hits the game winning shot, if you're really aligned with the team, if that is your highest priority, you feel every bit as good as if you'd hit that shot yourself. Even though you will not get the same coverage, you will not get the same credit. It will probably not show up on any posters. But you know, that's what really counts, as I'm sure a lot of the characters and IQ would agree. And I'm not saying that at all, like as copium, trying to make myself feel better about not having a heroic stage. I really believe that. The glamour would be cool too. I also don't think that Monoma's obsession with glory or whatever it is, attention, is a bad thing. It's kind of like the channel he runs to give him energy and push, and he's done a lot with it. When push comes to shove, I know he'll be there. I also suspect, and have seen to some degree, I think weirdly, 
paradoxically, sometimes when you settle into your role and you're, you give up on the sort of attention aspect of it and you just start to enjoy the, the doing of whatever it is, you see it as service, it gives you some delight to feel useful, the attention might come naturally as a result. That's a deep shoulder pat. This plan won't work unless every component is in place. Of course. Damn, what am I about to have his moment? Time, you've never been an extra. You are a star. <laughs> oh no, don't don't let it go to this guy's head. <laughs> oh no, should never give this guy attention. Division! Wow, wow. Crazy. Chicken Quirk makes a return! This is the beginning of the end. Risking a lot. Risking a lot. There's more to this plan we haven't seen yet. Spoken for. I didn't think that you'd be here for me to slaughter, dear old dad. Before we start, how about I cremate your friends? There's something uh, bizarre about this whole thing. Was that? Was that? That's Todoroki. No way am I going to allow. Wow, that. with ice, no less. Is this where you plan to mount a feeble last stand? That's the reaction you want. Underestimating. A cage? You think this will hold me? By time. We may have failed before, and your body won't ever fully recover. But we're both still standing. I still suspect he has one more in him. <laughs> We've plotted every detail to make you overconfident, to draw you out. It wasn't hard. Surprised you, didn't I? Division. Okay, yeah, I was right. They are separating, divide and conquer. And they've all chosen their sides, or their opponents. Wow. You really think you can split us up? Uh, that's a major gamble. It's a major gamble. I almost... I mean, it's tough to evaluate. Well, one other potential thing they could have done is rather than split up into their groups, they could have just like gotten rid of every other villain and just taken out Shigaraki and all for one if possible using their combined effort. That is the make or break point. The little guys respawn, you know? Break free. I gotta get to my lover. Oh, that didn't take long. A cage like this. He's gonna kill all the people in the room with him too. The opening move is ours. Deku, on it. Uh, two of them side by side. This is ridiculous. Chicken guy. As if the money. Well, I mean Japan's economy. The yen. Hopefully that's not imported steel. Though honestly, in the world of quirks, there would be a lot less scarcity. Uh, anyway, economics aside, the war. By Felicia's. What is grabbing him? What is what is that? Uh, pay attention. Look behind you. Hello. He's going in. He's going in. He's going in. Nah, he got in. He went after him. You did it, buddy. Nice speech, kid. You showed some real courage. MC, sir, can we go now? I can see the light. It's time for us to move on to phase two. Oh, this is not gonna slow down anytime soon, is it? This is gonna ramp up. So interesting to see what they've chosen. And there's hawks! That wouldn't be that easy. I hope it burns to know hubris is what brought about your downfall. Don't tell him. Splitting my minions up and attacking us separately. It's a clever plan. But did you ever stop to consider if you could actually win when standing against me, number one? This guy. No doubt you pitted one for all against Tomura. Quite risky. It is risky, yeah. You forced your youngest child to face your failures while at the same time continuing to abuse your eldest. <sighs> I hope this doesn't get through to Endeavor. I mean, the silver lining, I guess, is that there's nothing All For One is saying that Endeavor hasn't said to himself. It's one of those things where, like, you're never gonna be worse than the voice inside my own head, but also it happens to be wrong on a couple fronts. I mean, no one is forcing Todoroki to do anything. If anything, it's a vote of confidence. UA, what's going on? Oh, wow, they're using LA as UA as the containment. They pulled a fast one! Deku's gone! Oh, he, he wasn't able to follow him. Toga got him. He went through another warp. Deku? I thought oh, at least not alone. To be with this is okay. All right, okay. Danger sense didn't activate. She loves you. Isn't that like really bad? Our whole strategy revolved around him. We have to tell the Adapt. Yeah, I mean, it's better word than adapt. Right, right, right. We're fighting. 
the greatest oh. part in history. Wow. This is very Hunter x Hunter or where I'm at in that show right now. <laughs> Nothing was ever going to go fully according to plan. The real decision was made long before in the preparation. Planning in general is really important, but big picture, a lot of the outcome is probably determined before the choice. It's what you did in all the weeks, months, years before that. Did you prepare adequately? We're in the sky, floating. UA has become Balam Garden. I'll be fine as long as I don't get in my own way. Yeah, what was that? What was that? Oh, so we specifically chose flying quirks, right? Okay, there's level damage. It's an electromagnetic barrier. There's the support team, support class. You look stiff. Oh, best genius too. An electric current will render you helpless at least for a second, no matter your strength. Those blocks flew up out of the ground and crumbled in the sky. They're meant to be expendable. It's detachable. We're flying in the oh, I'm so worried for. Genius, he already died once. We have plenty of resources. Man, my baby's go really doing more than her part. This place was tailored to defeat you. It's your coffin in the sky. As a best genius fan, <laughs> I really love this a lot. That's my commentary. To be facing Shigaraki fearlessly and still punning. And he looks so good doing it. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly it. This is exactly the thing. Like, if this leads to defeating Shigaraki... Let's go, everyone! They will never get glamour, probably. Or they might, but it doesn't matter. My friends call me Yamamo, though. Feel free to use whichever name you like. Oh, she's lending a supporting hand. Interesting. A 16-year-old girl made it all possible. We're using the principal's evacuation system as countermeasures against decay. Alright, is this clear Nezu's name? <laughs> Not so sure. Timeline. And yeah, course. speaking of... Abundance. It takes a ton of energy to power this floating arena. Oh, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaminari definitely among them. Born for this. And constructed a seamless tomb for you. Yeah, but... This for fame, even, this, even this. Even this. Oh, it's funny. I was just mentioning people. that. Right, right. This battle theme, though. Yeah, but this is a little bit, I can't help but feel this a little bit of a, it's, it's, you know, it's a positive moment, it's a boost. I want to enjoy it, I want to love it. I do agree with the message, it's Shigaraki. Shockwave. Seriously? Don't you remember how we nerfed your ass at Shaku? <laughs> oh, that's such a great idea. Wow, this, he is everywhere. Whoa. He can copy my quirk well beyond his normal limit of fire. Give him some eye drops. I guess his eyes are naturally watered from his tears of joy. Dory is missing, and on top of that, the last time we fought Shigaraki, he wasn't complete. It is wise to expect the worst. It makes total sense. Though I would not lead with her. Although he's neutralized. I what? He shouldn't be able to do that. What the hell are they doing now? He shouldn't be able to do that. Oh no. I still can't believe I used to think you were cool. He beat it. He beat it. Eraser head. How did he do how did he do that? How did he manage to beat You're not supposed to be able to do that. I kinda of felt it coming. Oh god, that sucks so bad in so many ways. She's not dead, is she? She's probably dead. Nah, she's fine. She's probably dead. Well we'll see. Also, Monomo is riding this high, doing double duty on the plan. That is potentially a crushing blow to morale for normal humans. It's hard to talk about this now. Like my feelings about the episode, loving the themes were sort of overshadowed emotionally by that ending. But nevertheless, this has been building in the show for a long time, but I think this episode really crystallizes it. Or continues to dive into it. It really doesn't matter who delivers the final blow. There's no real waste here. There's no non-hero here, even though it's not doing any direct fighting. This is not easy to find and it's not easy to sustain. Depending on how you look at it, it's both a struggle of life and a beauty of life. The gifts you can give to the world are not necessarily a static fixed thing. So finding it might not be the end of the story. I think some people are lucky enough where they really hammer down the thing that they do that is a gift that is supportive to other people that really is like the maximal thing a person can do in service or a benefit. And there's enough work to do that that it's so clear that's the thing. I think for most people, the best thing you could be doing, the, the greatest gifts you could be giving, sort of scale and shift with your own ability and experience. So it's not always the same thing for long periods of time. But 
I feel like I have touched that feeling in moments. And what's really surprising about it is that a lot of times it's relatively unglamorous. I've had like touches with celebrity, but I've never been truly famous. In the grand scope of the world, I'm relatively nobody, at least in all measurable ways I can think of. My contributions are small. Yet I know the feeling of like, if you if you clearly directly experience like, oh, I, I actually used what I have and did something that was good. It's sort of like zero or one. That feeling is in itself the maximum, regardless of the stage. I don't think it would differ substantially to be on a grand stage and get a lot of attention for it. That also would be interesting and cool and probably feel good, but it's sort of a different thing. There's that feeling, whatever it is, the satisfaction of feeling like you did the right thing, the best thing that you could do in your own lens, on your own terms, following your moral conscience to your satisfaction. And then there's also like the accolades, the attention, the money, romantic attention from other people, which also can be great, right? But it's it's not the same thing. And it's not that there's anything wrong with any of that side of it or even wanting it. But watching shows like this, it, it kind of comes across to me that one is sort of more significant than the other or more important to aim for than the other. One is more useful, more enduring. And I mean, I would actually argue feels better. It's more of like this deep, solid high. I think it's one of those things that's similar to this idea I've heard where if you want to have a great romantic partner, for example, you don't chase the romantic partner, you build yourself up to the maximum degree and that will more than likely attract the right romantic partner. Similarly, I think if you chase the sort of glory side of things, fame side of things, money side of things, you may get that, but that does not imply or confer the, the other side of things. Whereas if you do what the characters in the show do, which is to really figure out what is the thing I can do that is a gift? What is the thing I can do that is right? It seems highly likely that those things will follow as a consequence. And even if they don't, you've sort of covered yourself because you've chased the most important aspect of your life. This has a lot of overlap with themes in Freerun, right? About like wanting people to remember your name, wanting people to know what you've done. It's like, even if they don't, there's a different kind of memory. There's a world memory. There's a memory of cause and effect and consequence to which you're contributing. And you will be remembered in that way. Though I, I recognize that's a bit detached and esoteric for most people, maybe. Anyway, I wonder if Monoma doesn't continue to be useful here, given the focus on him in particular playing a leading role. There are sort of practically infinite applications of his quirk. There's suddenly so much to do and so much to cover and so much I want to see. As much as I want to see this play out, I also really want to see Deku, Uraka, and Toga, because that's been a long time coming.